Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Today's video is the dyno test about manifolds, but really specifically is what happens when you have a manifold like this that has a clover leaf design. What happens if we remove it? This is probably going to dump some aluminum, so bear with me. If we remove that uh, clover leaf, what does it do for power? And that's what this test is about. In case you're wondering, this has actually got a little bit of history to it and it's actually very important to the actual history of this channel. So for those that don't know, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but this channel has been around for about four years or so. The initial one um, that I, initial things I were doing were all based on, you know, flow bench and heads and things like that. And as you guys know, I port manifold. So if you like to have manifold ported, I'll obviously do that. But I didn't have any dyno tests that actually showed how much power difference there would be if I removed the clover leaf. Because every time I poured an intake manifold like a dominator like these that have the clover leaves, I actually remove them. Now it could have been just like a monkey see, monkey do type of thing because I'd seen everybody else do that. I figured that must be the wise thing to do. Anyway, at the time I'd hit up Richard Holdner because I had watched his YouTube channel and I thought he had done, he was doing dyno tests. But what I didn't realize is all those dyno tests that he showed back then and maybe still today um, were when he was working with the magazines and he would do dyno tests then. So it wasn't like he was actively doing dyno tests on that engine dyno there. He was only doing what the magazines would ask. But I'd hit him up and ask him if he would test it. And he said, maybe I can get with the guys at West Tech and maybe they could do it. And that's when I realized if you really want to get any type of testing done, don't rely on anybody else, just do it yourself. And because of this idea, this one idea, I started doing the dyno tests. I had spent a lot of money and built a 406 dyno mule that we use for a ton of testing, including this one. So I know I went a little bit long on this video just talking about that, but if it hadn't been for this exact idea, I never would have dyno tested as much as I have today. I wouldn't have the seven dyno mules that we have today, all because of an idea. Because don't wait for someone else to do it, do it yourself. But anyway, that's not what you're here for. You really just wanna know, well, does it make any difference in power? First off, let me grab the camera and kinda of show you because when you look at them, you can't just cut out the clover leaf, which you kinda of could tell. Let me show you what I did and show you the difference in power. So this was the exact manifold that was used, not the exact one, but the exact part number. This is an Elderbrock Super Victor for a small block Chevy, part number is 2970. They come and they look like this and you've got what they call a clover leaf design. The question always was remained is, does it make more power having this in or removing it? Well, here's the thing. You can't just remove it because when you do, you just remove it, it looks like this. Which like, what did you do? This, my friends, is all I did was cut out the clover leaf. And if you ran it like this, it probably would be an absolute turd because this was done in the end mill. Now there's two ways in which I do it. So this one's actually the more aggressive one. This is for an R&D project for a future dyno that's coming up session uh, with testing all my Dragon Slayers. But let me kind of describe it. One of the ways that I usually do it back then, I know this is how I did it. What I would do is I'd just take a line and I'd scribe it across this and then use the end mill to cut that off. But if you actually lay a bigger gasket up, several times that line that you would have, instead of having a line that goes across here, would actually be further out this way, so you end up removing a lot. And that's what this one is. So as you can tell, there's a lot of material, especially on this side. And see, gasket centered, it moves way more from this side than that side. And you could even tell on the, these sides, see how much of a lip it's got there versus there? Same dimensions. But anyway, you can't just dyno test it like this. So all I had done was just cut it out, not this aggressive, because like I said, I just went from across. And the reason why I stopped doing it is because some customer complained. He was like, my gas, my, my spacer on here doesn't line up exactly. You need to do it. You did it wrong. And I was like, send it back. I'll run it on the dyno. And he never did. Because I knew exactly what happened. Nothing. But... This one's definitely going on the higher RPM deal, so I open it up to that. But point being is, when I had done it, it wasn't as aggressive as this. So essentially, you had maybe an eighth of an inch less here on this ledges here. Same on this side. It never seems to be this ends. It's this ends. But after that, I was not trying to 
fudged the numbers by porting out like I normally would, I simply just rolled the corner. So because you have such a large ledge here, I just rolled them. That's it. Some people claim that that's a full port job. So if you have people that mill it out and just radius it, full ported. That's not what I did. I just, I don't call that a full port job. I just radiused it and re would it. And here comes the disappointment. dyno comparison. Now I know some of you truckers are driving and, and trying so you can't really look at the screen. I'm going to tell you there's next to zero difference. So that was probably three, four hours, something like that I spent on the manifold. Worth zero horsepower taking out the cloverleaf. Not one bit. Now this engine, you can't just say, well, that's universal and everything. Agreed. This is a small block Chevy. It's 406. Had a solid roller cam, was still 11.2 compression ratio, but it's making some steam. I mean, 621 horsepower is pretty good. 551 foot-pounds of torque is pretty good. But removing that clover leaf did absolutely nothing. It just didn't. You could, what about, you might think, well, the stock one's better here. That's just the way the dyno's loading, because once it loads, they're tracking identical. Yep. So all that clover leaf removal, the whole reason for doing all the dyno tests didn't make any power not one so a little bit of a letdown but now you know and now i knew when i did it so i still do them though and so most people pay me to fully port it which means and that's where things got different so just removing the clover leaf and blending that didn't do anything i might do other videos before christmas showing the other stuff that it actually did gain but i'll go ahead and tell you save you the suspense port match is worth more power the um Rounding the dividers was worth more power. The actual, and this is where it's interesting, which would probably be in the next video or so, if you 40 grit the entire intake ports, that gained more power than grit finish. That's a later video. But anyway, there you go. Now you have your answers. So guys, thanks for watching. Remember, I'm no Superman. I did raise Superboy. I do not port cast iron heads. I do not respond to... Facebook or Instagram messages. The best way to get a hold of me is through email at winegunneracing at gmail.com. You guys take care.